Germany's decision to lock in a multi-year, 2 billion euro framework for spike LR2 anti-tank missiles marks a pragmatic turn in European force regeneration, by depth first, refine later. Concluded via NATO's support and procurement agency, the deal with Eurospike, the consortium linking Rainmetal, Deal, and Israel's Rafael through a Dutch holding, bundles missiles with training, documentation, and through life support. That structure signals Berlin's intent to rebuild a sustainable anti armor ecosystem after a decade in which short contracts, thin inventories, and sporadic upgrades left combat units short on staying power. The size and scope of the award also point to a broader shift in how Europe thinks about deterrence since Russia's full scale invasion of Ukraine. Steady output and predictable resupply are now as strategic as any single exquisite capability. At the core of the package is MELLS, the Bundeswehr's designation for the Spike LR LR2 family. LR2 is a fifth generation, fiber optic guided round that blends an uncooled infrared channel with a high definition day sensor, letting operators fire and displace, supervise the missile in flight, or prosecute targets using coordinates passed from external spotters. Ground teams can reach out to roughly 5.5 kilometers while helicopter crews can extend the envelope to around 10 kilometers. Warhead options include a tandem charge designed to defeat explosive reactive armor and a multipurpose blast fragmentation variant for fortified urban spaces. With each round weighing about 13.4 kilograms, dismounted units can carry useful loadouts without sacrificing maneuver, a practical detail that matters when platoons are asked to hold dispersed positions for hours. Germany has already fielded MELLS across infantry formations and has been integrating twin rail launchers on the Puma infantry fighting vehicle as part of the S1 enhancement. That fusion of stabilized optics, digital fire control, and top attack profiles restores a credible anti-tank punch at section level, exactly where German units needed to deter or attrit enemy armor without always calling in artillery or tanks. Layered across tripod teams, light vehicles, Pumas, and rotary wing platforms, MELLS builds a mesh of overlapping fires that can deny avenues of approach, sanitize strongpoints, or interdict fleeting targets. The ability to hand off a target mid-flight, refine aim points on the seeker video, or abort if civilians appear gives commanders both precision and moral authority at a time when urban combat and information effects are inseparable. The choice of a fiber optic tether is more than a technical preference, it is a hedge against a battlefield thick with jamming, spoofing, and smoke. Because guidance is not reliant on GPS, operators retain control through electronic warfare headwinds. A multispectral seeker helps maintain track through obscurance and adverse weather, which is valuable on a European battlefield where both sides are investing in concealment and signature management. In practice, the man-in-the-loop feed reduces fratricide risk, improves battle damage assessment, and supports confidence in restrictive rules of engagement, attributes that become decisive when political leaders are policing escalation and civilian harm in real time. Logistics and governance are doing as much heavy lifting here as hardware. Germany's parliamentary commissioner for the armed forces has flagged persistent ammunition shortfalls despite the Zeitenwen special fund, and training cycles plus support to partners have further sapped stocks. A framework process through NSPA smooths procurement friction, standardizes sustainment, and gives industry the long horizon it needs to invest in capacity. For a munitions category where delivery tempo equates to operational endurance, the predictability of a multi-year pipeline is a capability in itself. It also signals to allies that Berlin is prepared to underwrite collective readiness with institutional mechanisms rather than one-off buys that leave arsenals yo-yoing between feast and famine. Industrial politics are baked into the architecture. Eurospike's ownership balance anchors production in Europe while maintaining access to Raphael's technology and the broader Spike user community. That community, spanning NATO and partners, provides a shared corpus of testing data, training curricula, and lessons learned that can shorten upgrade cycles and ease interoperability. The arrangement also insulates Berlin from direct Israeli export sensitivities, 
a non-trivial consideration in a coalition environment where domestic debates over defense trade can stall urgent orders. By routing a major award through NSPA, Germany leverages a collective procurement umbrella that has become more important as European capitals try to scale inventories without reopening polarizing legislative fights. Doctrinally, MELLS plugs a gap between disposable short-range weapons and the costly precision of joint fires or tank-fired kinetic energy rounds. Its repeatability and standoff allow companies and battalions to keep pressure on enemy armor while preserving high-end munitions for decisive moments. On Pumas, the integration reinforces hunter-killer workflows, in combined arms teams, MELLS provides a reloadable backbone that can be surged to threaten sectors or held in overwatch to shape maneuver. The missile's ability to operate against armor, fortified positions, and light surface targets expands the target set beyond tanks, which matters when adversaries lean on mixed formations of armored vehicles, technicals, and field fortifications to complicate targeting. The acquisition's timing also interacts with NATO's posture on the alliance's northeastern flank. Units earmarked for deterrence missions need not only modern launchers but also a higher launcher-to-missile ratio to sustain extended operations and training without hollowing out wartime reserves. Stockpiles that can absorb the wear of realistic exercises are essential if formations are to build muscle memory in reconnaissance strike cycles and cross-domain targeting. The framework's training and documentation components are therefore not administrative padding, they are the connective tissue that ensures the missile's technical promise translates into unit competence at scale. A further advantage of buying into a widely used missile family is adaptability. As countermeasures evolve, active protection systems on main battle tanks, smarter decoys, harsher electronic attack, Armies need munitions that can absorb incremental updates without wholesale redesigns. The spike ecosystem's breadth increases the chance that software refinements, seeker tweaks, or new fusing options can be fielded rapidly and at acceptable cost. Germany's participation in that ecosystem also opens doors to cooperative testing in shared ranges, lowering the per unit burden of validation. Against this backdrop, the 2 billion euro figure is less headline grandeur than a rough index of seriousness. It funds not just missiles but the institutional scaffolding, sustainment lines, training pipelines, documentation, and predictable deliveries, needed to convert money into credible combat power. It also mitigates a vulnerability exposed repeatedly since 2022, European armies can field excellent platforms but struggle to maintain munitions depth under prolonged consumption rates. By shifting to framework contracts that privilege volume and continuity, Berlin is addressing the arithmetic of modern warfare where the ability to reload, physically and organizationally, determines whether units can fight past the first week. The political signaling is equally clear. Germany is aligning its procurement choices with an alliance narrative that emphasizes resilience, industrial mobilization, and interoperable precision fires. In doing so, it accepts that deterrence in Europe now hinges on the unglamorous disciplines of stockpile management and production cadence as much as on flagship systems. Spike LR2 is not a silver bullet, and it sits alongside other modernization lines for air defenses, artillery, and command networks. But as a versatile, operator-controlled, platform-agnostic missile with a robust user base, it offers exactly the kind of scalable precision tool that frontline brigades can employ every day in training and, if needed, at tempo in combat. In the end, the framework's value lies in converting ambition into endurance. MELS equips infantry sections, pumas, and helicopters with a shared, upgradable munition, NSPA's umbrella lowers friction and locks in volume, industry gains the confidence to add shifts and open lines, and units receive not only rounds on shelves but also the training and support to use them well. For a Bundeswehr tasked with credible deterrence and a Europe relearning the demands of high-intensity conflict, that combination is less about making news and more about ensuring that, if deterrence fails, Germany's forces have both the teeth and the stamina to sustain the fight.